Hello everybody, how's it going and welcome back to another LEGO Fortnite video. This is going to be 5 tips, pro tips and tricks for you and your Fortnite uh, LEGO adventure. Because there are a lot of things that can be a little bit tedious in LEGO Fortnite and these tips might just help you, you know, have a better time of things and make things a little bit easier for you and a little bit faster. But before this video starts, if you do like it, give it a like, subscribe if you are new, and hit the notification icon if you want to stay up to date with all of the up and coming content on the channel regarding Fortnite and LEGO Fortnite as well, among other stuff. Also, do please use Danconia in the Fortnite item shop and epic store if you want to support the channel, or if you want to support any anyone else's channel, please use their codes as well. It is completely free and supports us creators to make more content for you and to make the content even better. Also, channel memberships are now a thing, so if you want to support me directly, then hit that join button and you will get some extra goodies from the channel as well as having your own cool little icon in the chats and comments section, which is really cool in my opinion. And I think it would be awesome to have, check out all the other socials as well to keep up to date with all the other content going around this area. So, Fortnite tips and tricks, pro, etc, etc. So, there are plenty of enemies around the world. One of the most common ones are rollers or shells or whatever you want to call them. And we are going to lump blasters into this as well. So you have a normal roller, you have a sand roller, you have a frost roller, and you have those blasters as well. Well, with the 28.010 update, blasters are also found in the Dry Valley. So, these guys, when they roll towards you, or when the blasters explode, destroy things in their path or in a radius around them when it comes to blasters. You can use this to your advantage. Best example are the blasters in the Dry Valley. If you lead a blaster that is following you into a group of cacti, it will explode and the small radius around it blow up all of the cacti into its component parts, i.e. flexwood. You can then go back, not only get the blast core from the blaster, but also get that flexwood. And sometimes it can be a massive amount. It can be like a group of 30 flexwood if you get a big group of those cacti in one area and you blow up a blaster into it. This will save you on your durability on your axe. It is really, really useful and it obviously saves time from hitting the cacti with an axe. So this is a really good tip. Also rollers in general, the, sh the shells, let's call them instead of blasters. So the shells, if you have them roll at you, if they roll into a tree or roll into a small rock, they will do the same thing. If they roll into it, they will roll into it and create and leave granite behind for you to pick up or just normal wood or if you're in a different region whatever wood applies to that region. So it is well worth doing this because it will save on durability, it will save on tools and it will save you time as well. So that's the first tip. Second tip, the environmental enemies. So shells, uh, brutes, sand wolves, wolves in general, they'll fight each other. So if a shell or roller gets annoyed with a wolf, it will fight the wolf. If a brute gets annoyed with a skeleton, it will fight the skeleton. In fact, a brute will fight anything in its path. doesn't matter what it is. It will have a go at it. And what I found most useful is that rollers will fight each other. And blasters will fight each other. I've had a blaster blow another blaster up. So if you are struggling for maybe tougher shell enemies or if you're struggling on your way back from a voyage for things like a sword and so you can't fight things you could always lead these enemies into each other and try and make them fight each other it will save you a massive load of durability on your sword and also it might just save your life so that's a really good tip also if you are exploring please try and use the movement that is available to you there are plenty of mountains in this game. There are geysers in, or geysers, geysers, that's what I say, in the dry lands. And there's also now the new item with 28.10, the launch pads. If you have a glider, jump off and activate your glider. It will make your exploration so much quicker, so much simpler. And because you're in the air, you will be avoiding everything that's on the ground. 
you won't be getting those shells after you. You won't be getting the skeletons after you. You won't be getting the wolves after you, etc, etc. You can just bypass all of that and have a more peaceful move around the map and a more peaceful farming experience. So please do take that into account. Fourth tip. If you are having, if you have a substantial village built and you now have a metal smelter, please, please, because smelting is now getting fixed in the game, make sure you have a villager on metal smelting. And the reason I say this, so the two metals you could smelt are copper and iron. Copper is found in dry valley caves. Iron uh, is found in Frost Valley or Frostlands Caves. So if you have a villager on metal smelting, then they will smelt and produce copper bars and iron bars. Normally, if you leave them long enough, in stacks of 30. In a co-op world I have, I have Meowsels doing this. And he very often straight up gives me 30 copper bars. They do not use the resources within your village to make these. They won't use raw copper, they won't use raw iron. They just make them. So in essentially, it is just a free stack of copper bars or iron bars. And these two resources are pivotal, especially copper for things like uh, shields and swords. Iron is also pivotal, especially if you want to make cosmetics and stuff like that. They are two extremely useful resources and you can get them for free from your villagers if you have them on metal smelting. So make sure that you have a villager if you're at that level doing metal smelting when it is applicable to your village level and you have a metal smelter because it's going to save you so much time, so much aggro, so much grief and it's literally free it's it's going to save you on resources because you won't even need the bright core to smelt the bars so please do it it's literally free resources there for you to take and the last tip of this video is we have plenty of enemies on the maps so we have wolves shells skeletons brutes we have all sorts from what I can tell, the only one I haven't tested this is, is with skeletons. I haven't had the chance to yet. But the shells, the wolves, and the brutes all die on significant contact with water. So I don't really know why this is a thing, but it is. As a player, you can take this, you can take advantage of this. And I really, really think you should. So if you're a little bit under under leveled or a little bit weak to be dealing with the likes of brutes you can lead them to water as soon as they have heavy contact with that water they die leaving their loot behind you will get the brute scale so this is an easy way to farm brute scales shells from rollers uh claws from wolves and it works i believe in any region so it'll work for frost wolves, it'll work for the dry valley sand wolves, and it'll work for normal wolves. Same with frost shells, sand shells, and the normal shells, or rollers I should say, along with obviously your normal brutes, your sand brutes, and your frost brutes. So if you do have the chance, it's going to, and also obviously it's going to save so much, again, on the durability of your weapons. And... I can't emphasize the durability enough because there is no way to repair your weapons. They patched the bug that was in the game that allowed you to repair weapons through breaking a chest with them in it. So there's no way to repair weapons anymore. Once your weapon is dead, you have to make a new one. So anything you can do to save on the durability of your items in your inventory, crossbow, sword, axe, pickaxe, etc. is well worth doing. So, use water to your advantage. If you've got water near where you're fighting someone, try and lead them to it. They will probably, I don't know about skeletons, but the rest of them will probably die from it. So, easy resource grinding. I hope these tips and tricks help you on your grind through LEGO Fortnite. 
Obviously, keep up to date with everything that's going on. Let me know if there are any other tips and tricks I can extend these videos, make more of these videos. In the comments below, if you have any other that you could add on to these top five, or I say top five, but five tips and tricks for LEGO Fortnite. As more updates come out, more and more content will be coming to the channel, and we will be covering it all. Also, there will probably be later down the line an updated villager video, although... I'm not doing that right now because only three villagers have been added. So that's why that's not coming out yet. But if you need anything and want to know anything more about the 28.10 update, there is a, a video on the channel about that as well. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>